The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. If thoughts, comments, Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double T 973.com for that. This, this might be a good place for this story that I saw last night. Uh, these two guys, a uh, guy by the name of Gary Parrish and Matt Norlander, they work for CBS. Uh, they are considered to be college basketball insiders. They have spent the past month surveying 100 or more Division One men's basketball coaches for their annual Candid Coaches series. Okay, Coaches agreed to share unfiltered opinions in exchange for anonymity. They're asked 10 questions, and these guys are posting these over the next three weeks. So we'll see how they we'll see what the interest level is. And I might go back to this from time to time, depending on what uh, what this is. The first first question was regarding uh, money to secure com- commitments and uh, name image likeness deals and the dollar amounts connected to those deals. Uh, the, the, the answers varied from the coaches. But they, I think the consensus was uh, that basically uh, what they hear and what they believe uh, isn't necessarily what's the truth. Okay, <laughs> the, the, what the, 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 all of that is something less than certain about everything that they read and they hear. But here's here was the question: They were asked to name. Which three programs do you believe have the best NIL situations? Okay. There are 19 teams on this list. And within those 19 teams, there are five Big 12 schools. I'd like to see how many of those you can name. Five current of the 16, five current Big 12 schools. Uh, that have the best NIL situation. That have the best NIL situations. Uh, Kansas and Baylor. Kansas is number one. Forty three percent of the coaches. Uh, Kansas appeared on forty three percent of the ballots, which was which was surprising that it was that low. Really, to be quite honest, the number one team. Um, you want to take well guess who the number one team is? It's not in the Big Twelve. I thought you said Kansas. Oh, Kansas is number one of the Big Twelve. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have said this team a year ago, but when I tell you this Arkansas. team. Arkansas. Yes. Okay. 73.7. Okay. And Baylor is not on the list? Baylor is on the list. They are they are the number four team on this list at 11.6. Kansas is where nationally? 43.2, 43.2 2 on the ballots. Yeah, but num- what number? Uh, two. Number two. Two. Okay. So we got two and four in the Big 12. No. Nope. Baylor Baylor is not number four. They're they're the number four team in the Big Twelve. In the Big Twelve, okay. Stick to sorry. one set of numbers, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, Houston. Houston is not on this list. Arizona. Arizona is only on this list as programs that received at least one vote. Well, we know Texas Tech is on the list. Texas Tech is on the list. They're, they were listed on 9.5%. Why do you say we know? Because we know all the money that we've oh, spent okay, yeah. here over the years. Right. We've, we've heard that you're, a couple of years ago you were top five nationally. Yeah. yeah. I don't imagine that's changed. I, I don't either. I, I don't either. I just didn't know if you were going to be surprised by that or not. Because there's only five teams listed in, of the 19. So you've gotten three. But From you have the Big Twelve. Um, you've not, you've yet to get the number two team in the Big Twelve. Uh, Iowa State. Nope. Kansas State. Kansas State's on the list at, at uh, they're the number three team in the Big Twelve at thirteen point seven. The number two team in the Big Twelve. Colorado. No. Hmm. Is going to shock you. No. BYU. Yes. What? Yes. That does shock me. They were they were listed on thirty point six percent of the ballots. Huh. Yeah, Kansas at 43.2, Arkansas at 73.7. They were listed, BYU is listed above Kentucky that was listed at 25.3% of the ballots. 
K-State 13.7, Baylor 11.5, Texas Tech 9.5. Texas Tech is listed above Duke at 8.4% of the ballots. Yeah, from and things U- that I've heard, that's not surprising. And UConn at 6.3. Mm-hmm. Texas was at 3.2. And then the, the uh, number 19 team on this list, well, the, I guess they were tied for 18th, Ohio State and St. John's at 2.1%. Anyway, I thought that was really – very interesting. Uh, programs that received at least one vote uh, included Florida, Georgetown, McNeese State, Ole Miss. No surprise there. That number will climb for them. Uh, Oregon, Villanova, and Washington. But I think the thing, the thing, my my takeaway from this was the shock of BYU being at thirty point six percent. That is really surprising. I did not think, I did not think that they paid like that up there. Yeah, that's that's really surprising. You know, given given all that. So anyway, I thought that was mm-hmm. kind of a fun little exercise. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that kind of pans out as uh, as we go. So the 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 point of this is they said please the, the take away take this away the, the way the question was worded. We didn't ask coaches what they know about nil only if they. Only if, if only because we already know that nobody really knows what's true and what isn't. Instead, we simply asked them to tell us which schools they believe have the best NIL situations based off of what they encounter in here on the recruiting trail. We asked for lists of three. Yeah. Uh, one coach, one coach said this about John Calipari. You know, Cal, he's not going anywhere unless he has everything in place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes complete sense. Yeah, I'm surprised that Baylor was as low on the Big Twelve list as you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the top five in order in the Big Twelve Conference is Kansas, Kansas State. No, Kansas, Baylor. Excuse me, Kansas, BYU, Kansas, BYU, then Kansas State, then Baylor, then Texas then Tech. Tech. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a surpriser. Now we'll see what does that mean in the conference standings when that all comes out. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time for the Stay in Sports History. Today is Thursday, August the 22nd, 2024. Here is Jeff McGuire with the Stay in Sports History. Going in the Wayback Machine to 1917. The the Bolsheviks. The Pittsburgh Pirates (laughs) play their fourth straight extra inning game. Okay. Left fielder Carson Bigby sets a Major League Baseball record of 11 at bats in 22 innings in a 6 5 loss to the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field. They only scored six runs in 22 innings? Correct. How did he get, how did he bat every other inning? I have no idea. Walks, maybe, and then grinding into double plays? I don't know. Well, I bet that runners in scoring position stat was really bad that night. That seems like it's almost impossible. I'm not telling you you're wrong, but man, it like that seems really tough to do. What they just accomplished there. Mm-hmm. 1946 baseball approves a 168 game schedule. They would re- later rescind it because you know currently we only play 162. Correct. Unless you're the White Sox, and then you don't play any because. That would be a Major League Baseball team. 1959, American Football League officially named at a meeting in Dallas, Texas. Charter members include Dallas, New York, Houston, Denver, Los Angeles, and Minneapolis, St. Paul. Hmm? 1961, New York Yankee Roger Maris hits home run number 50 of his season total, 61. Number 50. That doesn't quite sound the same as number one. Correct. It's different. <laughs> it's definitely different. 1980, Bill Veck agrees to sell the Major League Baseball Chicago White Sox to Eddie D. Bartolo Sr. for $20 million. Just say it faster. Bartolo. Right, Chuck? Barto- Bartolo? No, no. If you, if you hadn't said that to me, I would have think. It's, it's, I think, you're I, think right. Jeff- I think it's Bartolo. No, I, I think, think you said it right. 
I think he said it right. uh, D Bartolo. It's D Bartolo. It's D Bartolo. It's D Bartolo. Yeah. The, yeah. So I had it wrong. The ale owners would actually block that sale. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that deal went through. And then I think it was two years later that he then sold it to Jerry Reinsdorf, who is one of two owners to never pay a player over $45 million a year. <laughs> Not no, not, not forty-five. Uh, forty-five million dollars for a contract. That's not true. I mean, paid Michael Jordan like a hundred for baseball. Yeah, yeah. Well, for baseball, Oakland A's. Me and the A's. Way to go. Nineteen eighty-nine. Nolan Ryan strikes out his five thousand five thousandth batter. Chuck Hines. Do you know who the batter was? I know Jamie does. That's why I'm po- uh, pointing at you. Oh man, I used to know this. Is it Ricky Henderson? It is Ricky Henderson. Well done, Chuck. 2007 Texas Rangers route the Baltimore Orioles by a lot. Man. 30 to 3. Most runs scored by a team in modern Major League Baseball history. And in 2019, the number 22 Texas Tech soccer team rang up the new season with a 6-1 to one blowout win at San Diego State. The Red Raiders put it out of reach from the start, knocking in five in the first half, including the first score just three minutes after the opening whistle. Hopefully they can do some of that tonight at the John Walker Soccer Complex. And... There's a lot of things that it is for food today, but there's really only one we're going to focus on because it's the one that should be focused on. Happy National Burger Day. Oh, nice. Go. Do you feel like you can make a better burger than you can buy in your backyard or on your grill or when you grill? I mean, can I make a better burger than when I go to to some places? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some other places, no. Okay. There's a really good burger on a place over on the West Loop. I can't touch that burger. Okay. That one's fantastic. You probably don't play that game, do you, Jamie? Play that game. I can make, you know, the, oh, I can make a better steak than I can buy it. Oh, I can make a better burger than I can buy it. <laughs> I'm not much of a cook. Okay. I mean, I can grill just fine, but. I don't have any claims of when I'm grilling. I understand. You know, I, I'll grill and I'll, I guarantee you it'll be food. <laughs> Protein. That's what I guarantee. Okay. Nobody seems to complain. Okay. So. Happy birthday for me. We're all, ga- we don't need to guess, yeah. but we know you think you can do it better than everybody else. We get it. No, no, we didn't have yeah. to ask. But the, I know we didn't have no, to ask. No, we we know. Yeah, you know, he puts a little drop of water on the burger yeah. and puts a, makes a little crevice in the middle. <laughs> you know, and he puts the water in there and he puts it on the grill. It's the best bur- burger ever made in the history of ever. I, I, right? I, I, Did I, we say it for you? Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I feel like that. I'm. Remember I, when I feel, I feel you like, um, have said before that. Uh, y- us and your wife, we know you too well. Yeah, yeah right. Well, we, right. Know, we knew what words were coming next. We right. just saved you time. Yeah. That was yeah. nice of us, wasn't it? Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm just waiting. I'm just, we're good. Happy <laughs> birthday to a guy we haven't heard from in a while. LaMelo Ball is 23. Wow. He's only 23. Randall Cobb, 34. Uh, Travone uh, Travone. <laughs> Damn it, I had it this morning, and now I can't say it. Uh, Trevon Boykin, there we go, 31. Carl Yastrzemski is 85, Paul Molitor 68, and Bill Parcells is 83. And, much like the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in 1968, on this day in 1972, delegates entering the Republican National Convention in Miami Beach are harassed by 3,000 anti-war demonstrators Mm. Many painted in, in death masks. The rest of the convention is marked by demonstrators outside the meeting hall. Hundreds of protesters are arrested and many are injured when police use riot control agents. And that is this day in sports history. This day in sports history. Right. Unlike the one in 68, though, there was nobody killed. 6.52 this morning here on the morning drive. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember why uh, DeBartolo Sr. was denied... Um, 
his ability to, to buy the White Sox in 1980. I, I think... I was thinking it might have been an organized crime situation. <laughs> that might do it. But I think it, I think it was the he owned the Penguins, some the Forty um, Niners, and I think it was the racetrack involvement that might have gotten him because of the gambling situation with race with horse races. Okay, I think I think that's if memory serves me correct. I think that, and now of course, everybody embraces gambling like it was you know like it's you know. Mrs. Smith's pie or something. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, what? there's no problem. Do they embrace them as much as they embrace your burgers? See, I think the difference is, mm-hmm. as I said before, I don't get complaints. You get compliments. That's yes. different. Like, yeah. people with me are like, yeah, okay, it's food, mm-hmm. it's good. Mm-hmm. It's people good. with you are like, wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the difference. I'm trying to, you know, trying to up my game here a little yeah, bit. That's yeah, that's good. I'm trying to, mm-hmm. trying to up my game. Uh, water on your burger. Chuck probably boils good ribs as well. I do not. I do. I. I but I was well, right. I remembered correctly. Yeah, on the do, burger I thing. Do, right? I do pour water on my burger when I flip it. Yes, yeah. because it hydrates it and keeps it from drying out. I know. Makes complete sense. So you know, um, got a little spray bottle out there. No, nope, I just take a little plastic bottle and a plastic cup and just just sprinkle it on top. Just mm-hmm. sprinkle it on top. <clears throat> I I will tell you this. I will admit that if my life depended on it, and somebody handed me a rack of ribs, I'd probably end up dead. Uh, I, I I have not mastered the rib yet, but I'll stake my life on my on my brisket, my pulled pork, my beer can chicken, my burgers, and my steaks. But when it comes to ribs, I just haven't haven't gotten there yet. Six fifty four this morning here on the morning drive. Thanks for being with us. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Thank you for being with us. We are, when you want to know who we are, uh, that's Jamie Lint to my right on your radio dial. Uh, Jeff McGuire is to my left on your radio dial, and I'm just Chuck Hines. It's nice to have you with us. Just Chuck Hines. I'm just Chuck Hines. Is that your Chuck, Twitter you, handle? Chuck, you are a lot of things. <laughs> you are not just. You are not just <laughs> yeah. Chuck Hines. I'm just Chuck Hines. No room that you have ever been in have they said, that's just Chuck that's Hines just Chuck Hines. Oh, that's just Chuck over That's there. just Chuck Hines. <laughs> that's just Chuck Hines. You know. I have my moments. That's for that's that's for certain. Um, speaking of signature stag, the uh, Tech Talk boys will be over there uh, tomorrow uh, from three to six for their end of summer sidewalk sale. Uh, I think we're going to put them inside because I think if you put Clint on the uh, on the sidewalk, he'd be like a fried egg pretty quick. Oh, uh, that's disappointing. <laughs> you know, be like we want people driving by to see them. See them? Okay. Well, then put well, them outside. We, we have a tent. Okay, we're gonna put them outside. Mm-hmm. Then good. Put I, them outside. I, that's up to the salesperson, Chuck. Okay. That's always up to the salespeople. Mm-hmm. We, all, we yeah. all know they make all the rules. Sure. Yeah, the um, rest of us are just happy to be here hanging out with them. They do have over there uh, shoes that I that I wear, Johnson and Murphy, and they they have the the leather soles too i believe because okay. they have the rubber soles mm-hmm. and the i prefer the leather soles are you doing any nil deals with them like Johnson where, and would, Murphy? where would no. chuck hines wears no you think they have a sign there and no. a signature stag that says where would chuck hines wears Mm-mm. they don't no they don't mm. um and then i'll get it up on friday when we're there okay yeah <laughs> okay. get it up so anyway so look for uh look for gus and uh, clint if you've not ever seen uh, Clint Make out in the sure wild. Make sure they're not trying to steal anything. Yeah. They'll be there at 73rd in Milwaukee. They both uh, are the known for claiming things as their own. End of summer sidewalk sale. <laughs> See, you're, you're, now you've got me worried. I didn't even think of that until now. I'm going to yeah. have to walk around in like a police uniform mm-hmm. behind those two, making sure the store still has stuff yeah. in it when they leave. Yeah. All right, so that'll be that'll be tomorrow from 3 to 6. I met uh, at football practice the other day. He was being given a tour, so... Maybe he's getting ready to spend some money, and um, he's a friend of the show. He's he's a morning drive loyalist, uh, Brad Birdsong from Birdsong Automotive. He is not uh, he's not my customer. He's our the station's customer. But um, I met him as he was uh, walking into the Sports Performance Center. He'd been over at the South End Zone, I believe. Uh, He'll have uh, your car singing like a bird. Yeah, right. But I mean, he was a nice guy. He listens to us. Enjoys enjoys this fine radio program. I have told you before, mm-hmm. 
and I've told this to Jeff too. There are not many places that I go to with me and my pessimistic negative personality right. that I walk out of there saying, wow, they were great. Okay. You know, there's plenty of them that I walk out of there going, yeah, they did their job. It was good. Mm-hmm. Solid. Birdsong Automotive I've used a few times and I've walked out of there going, they were awesome. Good. We had a mad people. Guy. They did a good job. They were on time. Mm-hmm. They were pleasant. They did what they said they were going to do. The price wasn't higher. I mean, I'm not trying to do a paid endorsement here for them, mm-hmm. but I've been super happy with them. Okay. The good. times I've used them. But when we had our massive problem with the van a couple of years ago that required it significant work done, did it like a, a, a champ, and the van has been running tip top ever since. Yeah. Now my car does not sing like a bird, like he claims. So, but <laughs> what you do? <laughs> Seven uh, nineteen this morning here on the morning drive. Another guy that doesn't sing like a bird, but man, he sure does. I, I mean, if uh, where is this going? <laughs> I'm trying to think the birds that talk the, a lot. The, what, what's a bird that talks a lot? Not a parrot, because parrot just repeats. Um. Anyway, the tiki bird. Yeah, maybe so. In the tiki room? Yeah. Or the little bird in... Disney uh, World? You know, in uh, Lion King or something like that. Uh, Joey McGuire, he's the head football (laughs) coach at Texas Tech. He'll talk today over at the uh, Civic Center, which is right across the street from us. And he'll he'll speak about his football team and get everybody uh, fired up. Uh, He met with the media the other night, and I thought this was interesting because we've heard a lot about the depth of the defense (laughs) and things along those lines. But he spoke... (laughs) What? The bullfighter comment? Uh huh. Yes. The, the Chuck Bird. Yeah. Is there a picture? What is McGuire laughing at? Like you have anything? That to doesn't stop. mean it's not funny, okay? <laughs> Just because it applies to me too doesn't mean it's not funny. Yeah. Well, the Chuck Bird. The Chuck Bird. That's the one that talks a lot. That's oh, what the, bullfighters says, say. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, birds don't typically talk. Right? <laughs> typically, well. <laughs> Mythical birds don't even talk either. Uh, anyway, the Joey McGuire spoke about the depth at running back for his football team. You know, um, we did not scrimmage Taj uh, for that reason. Um, Cam Dickey uh, had an ankle sprain, so he did not go, but he was back today. He'll get even more tomorrow. And so I feel good about, you know, of course, Taj being the, the starter and then both Cam Valdez and Cam Dickey being, you know, 2A and 2B. The, the, probably the best thing out of all of this uh, with Cam rolling his ankle is Jacoby Williams is a difference maker. I mean, uh, he, he is something. It, and with him running with the ones and the twos to where he's seeing a little bit better, clearer pitcher, cleaner pitcher, um, you know, there's definitely something there. I mean, uh, I, I'm not saying how much he would play, but he's definitely a guy that's like a home run hitter, uh, catches the ball really well out of the backfield. But I, I would say like Cameron, Cameron Valdez and, and Cam Dickey are 2A and 2B. In addition to what you have with Taj Brooks, obviously. Clearly good depth, and that's what you want at that position. We know mm-hmm. those guys are, you know, take a pounding during the season, and there are times when they get a little bit banged up. So, you know, to be able to have plenty of guys that – can handle um, taking a little bit of a load off of Taj would be good. And then, you know, being able to, to be, quote, a home run hitter. Um, Coach McGuire was also asked about the most improved position since the spring. Uh, I would say star. Um, A.J. McCarty and B.J. Jordan. Uh, it's um, it's really impressive. A.J. is playing at another level. Uh, the speed that he's playing at right now is really impressive, and B.J.'s not backing off the competition. Um, but I love the way AJ's, AJ's playing. Like he, he is constantly an example. Whenever we have team meetings at night, we do a we we everybody wears a GPS unit. We have a competition, um, max velocity competition, and and AJ has been the fastest at 21.7 miles per hour, and uh, he just keeps showing up on tape. So I would say Star's been the biggest improvement. I always like it when, you know, coaches speak about depth and, you know, and then they can back it up when they're talking about whether it's a specific positions like he did with those two, one on defense and obviously the running back. 
when they name multiple guys or they name two guys right away. I mean, they don't have to think about it. I mean, that to me is kind of like the telling tale of like, okay, it sounds like we do have some depth there because bing, bing, and then lists off immediate attributes about what each specific player can do. Because it definitely it's makes always, it a little bit more believable. Yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. So if a guy, if a coach says, "Yeah, we got, we've got lots of guys that can really help us at mm-hmm. running back. We've got Bob and <laughs> and um, twenty one over there. Oh, what's his name and Fred? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it just makes it, like you said, it makes it more, especially when they respond right away. It's like, it's like when I asked him about the. Uh, kicking competition have you said all the it was an immediate he just turns to me and looks and points and says no <laughs> okay <laughs> no i would have actually liked him to be a little bit less confident in that <laughs> yeah, right. i would have preferred right. <laughs> something different yeah 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 the morning drive podcast from double t 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is brought to you by Kinetico of West Texas. All right, gentlemen. This one's a wide open, wide open question, except for one thing. You cannot answer. Baron Morton. The Texas Tech football game. Okay. The Texas Tech football game. You can't answer the Texas Tech football game. Okay. I want you in order to tell me the three things that you're most excited about for next Saturday. Oh, for next Saturday. The three things that I'm most excited about. It can be about the Texas football mm-hmm. game, a specific part of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Three things you're most excited about heading into next Saturday. Today is, let's pretend it's Saturday morning. Okay. Next Saturday. What are you excited about? Okay. <laughs> What has you just fired up? You Giddy. Can't wait to see. <laughs> can't wait to get to the stadium, so to speak. Uh, I'm excited to see how they're going to come out of the south end zone in the uh, out of that tunnel and the smoke and how the horse is going to do and is is the horse you know going to stop at the double T and get a drink of water? I mean, um, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about. Um, I'm excited about going over to the uh, to the Overton for the Double T nine seven three Coors Light post game show after the game because I, would, I enjoy seeing people there and handing things out and having a cold Coors Light. Well, and this year I'm gonna I think chime in with Rob Rowe if he'll let me. If he doesn't want me, and then that's a, that's fine. He's 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 a smart guy. He he breaks down stuff all the time. Um, and then I think the other thing is. Um, I'm I'm excited to see some of my compadres over there on the east side um, that you know are kind of in and around my uh, my locale. Okay, see who's who's still with me. Okay, with us, me and okay. the lucky lady. Um, number one should come as no surprise to <laughs> anybody that knows me. Midnight? No, when it's over. No, 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 no. <laughs> that that that's not number one. Um, I, and I don't know what it is yet, but I'm a firm believer there's no such thing as a bad flyover. Oh, okay. If you got a paper airplane to fly from one end of the stadium to the other and cleared the whole thing, I would watch that flight and enjoy every single second of it. Because mm-hmm. how amazing would it be to see a, a paper airplane fly 100 yards? Like, that would be cool to see. Uh, especially if it was like, you know, on straight line and did the whole thing it's supposed to do. Like, that would, there's no such thing as a bad flyover. So the first flyover of the year. Number two... To Chuck's point, yeah, the the tearing down of the Coors Light post game show because there's an awful lot of work leading up to that point that finishes at that point that everything worked that all the all the lines lined up for what we've got to do here that it's the very first time in about a month that I can just relax because it worked i'm very much looking forward to that moment of when that happens because there's a lot of stress right now the third thing that i am looking forward to is the final score of the first game because you can't be as chuck would like to predict later uh tomorrow after the or later today after lunch and 12 and 0 until you're 1 and 0 and i do not worry about losing the first game but seeing that fi- first final score means you're 1 and 0 I can't say I'm excited about that because that just feels like it'll be just a sigh of relief, right? 
you can't be excited about well i mean you can whatever it's your mm-hmm. choice but i'm i no matter what the score is, I don't know that I'm going to be that excited. Okay. Okay. Unless, like, okay. Michael Hudson I'm, scored I'll, seven touchdowns or something like that. I'll say this. I'll be less excited if Abilene Christian gets to 29 and Chuck gets to say he was right. I'll be less excited. I think that's uh, I think that's any week of the year, right? Okay. So, as much as I, as much as I like to – I'm more focused on the game guy. Mm-hmm. There's not too much that I'm, quote unquote, like feel like I'm going to get answered this weekend. Sure, or, I, or I next weekend, whatever. Yeah. But I will say this: <clears throat> I, I'm I'm anxious to see if what our offense looks like, and there's a whole bunch that goes into that. What does Baron Morton look like healthy? Okay. Does he look a lot better than he did last year? Mm-hmm. And again, I I know we're playing Abilene Christian and not you know Arizona, but just the, the zip on his ball, how far? I, I mean, think is, you're going to be impressed better, by that. Is he better with his deep ball? These wide receivers. I mean, the wide receiver core last year was beyond disappointing. Okay, and so well, I guess just like our passing game and what that looks like. Do we use the tight ends more in the passing game? As receivers, I, I mean, so I guess I would say just say the passing game is number one for me. That's okay. the thing I'm most excited to see. Um, I, I I'll give you um, number two on the, you know, just to to see how things are different now with with the south end zone. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I'm not nearly as obsessed with that as you are, but I um, obsessed seems like a strong word. Yeah, it also <laughs> seems accurate. <laughs> But I, I mean, I do think it looks really cool. I'm, I mean, I don't. I think I'm going to get in there. I'm going to look. I'm going to go. Wow, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, it's it's just this dominant, commanding thing over there that looks really cool. I'm going to be interested to see how they, you know, how they enter and how things change <clears throat> from what we're used to. And then I pretty much think I'll forget about it. I okay. don't think during the game I'll be looking over there to see what it looks like. Throughout the course of the game. And marvel at it? I don't think I'll marvel. Okay. I don't do that. I'll leave the marveling for me because I'll, I'll, I think it looks awesome. And I remember going into TCU when they redid the stadium and and their south end zone and just going, man, that looks awesome. And I just think this looks better than that. I I think it looks awesome too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to keep looking at it. Like, (laughs) um, you know, like, like when you were in high school and you saw a really pretty girl and like, hey, she's pretty. Did you just keep staring at her <laughs> or did you just know she was pretty? Probably kept uh, staring at her. Okay. <laughs> and the statute of limitations <laughs> ran out on stalking. I need to look that up yeah. before I answer that question. All right. And number three for me, you guys are probably going to laugh and you're probably going to be shocked. OK, I I. I've had a pair of Adidas shoes in the box for like four or five months. I've never worn Adidas running shoes at all. So I'm dying to see what they feel like. And I'll break those out on Saturday because I'll have an Adidas shirt on. Okay. And so wow. I'm, I'm dying to see what these Adidas shoes feel you've like. You've not put them on yet. I have not put them on. I tried them on in you the store, on, yeah. but they've been in the box since then. 740. If you'd like to chime in, you can. The Yates Flooring Center chat line is open. Go to the Double T 97 through mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97 3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. The Morning Drive on Double T 97 3 and Double T 97 3.com. Hey, good morning. It is uh, 8.02 this morning here on The Morning Drive. Jamie Lint, Jeff McGuire, and Chuck Hines. We come to you from the First United Bank studio here in downtown Lubbock and look forward to uh, hearing from you continuously throughout the day and morning on the Yates Flooring Center chat line or the Visual Edge IT hotline. All right. So as folks come in and come out, they hear bits and pieces. Uh, With regard to Cameron Valdez, the, the point that I was making was that Mike Gundy said yesterday that he's going to see more he thinks he thinks there'll be more players entering the portal not as a point to transfer per se but as a point to negotiate my only point on the cameron valdez thing was it's it has been it seems like rare for a player to enter the portal and then to come back out of the portal with the same school 
some some coaches have a philosophy of, hey, if you're going to go into the portal, then basically there's no return. Once you enter the portal, that's the point of no return. Because you've already had the conversation of, hey, what your role is going to be or what everything is going to be. And so if you're not happy with that, then you go into the portal, then it is what it is. I think in the Valdez situation, I think, this is just me, he may have gotten in there and went, okay, everywhere else I go, it's going to be a lesser program, not a power four program. The amenities and everything is not going to be what I'm getting here at Texas Tech. And the playing time isn't going to be that exponentially better. And maybe Texas Tech came back to him. And there's, and there's, and, and Jeff pointed this out to me during the uh, break that, you know, Taj Brooks actually called him um, and talked to him about coming back. But I think maybe he found that, and maybe the coaches went back and said, hey, here's what your role is going to be. He's got to stay healthy. And then here's here's some money that he wouldn't be getting at a lesser program. That's that's just pure speculation on my part, but that's just what I think. So that's the wrap up on that because a couple of people had had questions on the Yates Learning Center chat line. Like, I find it hard to believe Valdez wouldn't have been able to find another place to get more touches. Probably so. He but probably not, would have. But, yes, but not at this level. Yeah, probably not at the Power Five level, yeah. Power Four level, yeah. right? And so maybe that was a factor. Like, eh. Yeah. I don't really want to go play at a smaller school. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I don't doubt that he got money, that yeah. that was a part of it as mm-hmm. well. That was probably part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm with you, Texter, in that. I, I have a hard to, time believing that he, he didn't get any money, you know, and mm-hmm. I have a hard time believing that if he went to Sam Houston State, he couldn't get a ton of touches. Yeah. But, A, would he be playing in Power 4, and B... Would he be getting the NIL money? Right. I just yeah. don't. I don't. I, no. I, I think the answer to the one is yes, and one is no. And then mm-hmm. it's like, okay, does mm-hmm. school come into that at all? And does location and sure. and you know, it, sure. it, it, sometimes what you know is better than what you don't know. And I will say, I think at the beginning of the transfer portal era, it was a pretty much you're in, you're out. I mean, yes. you're not coming right. back here. Right. I think that's different now. I, do I mean, too. heck, you even see Tech baseball brought back two guys that hit mm-hmm. the portal this year. Two of them, you know. I'm thrilled to have both of them back. Yeah. Um, so and Davis Rivers and and Garrett Bame. So, um, you know, thrilled to have them back. And so, uh, I think that guys maybe are putting themselves in as a way to see what's available out there. But if they are looking at the situation and going, okay, well, it's not really better. The the situation's not better for me somewhere else. I liked it here. Mm-hmm. I might as well just stay. Yeah. So I think it's possible. Whereas before guys were hitting the portal and you knew there was no way they were coming back. Mm -hmm. And I think you also look at, at, you're starting to get a little history now with regard to the portal that just because you go into it doesn't necessarily mean, mean that uh, it was, that is the grass is going to be greener. It's like anything else. You're, it, it, there's plenty of guys that gone in the portal and didn't that came out worse than where they were before. Sure, or don't have jobs, or don't have jobs at all. Uh, we, when we asked him about it, with it regards to Cameron coming back, uh, this is what he had to say about the whole process. Actually, me and Taj had a conversation, and Taj had told me his decision, and it was best for him to come back. And then after he had told me that, I had went within myself and my own decision. I had into the portal to see opportunities, see what else was out there. But I always want to stay at Texas Tech. Tech is my home, and I love it here, and I love the staff, teammates, and the coaches. And this, my plan was to always come back, but it was just the best opportunity for me as well. So I think entering the portal was, it was good to see something else, but I, it also brought me to a clear understanding of where I wanted to be and where my feet are. Bottom line is, this was the best situation for him. If he truly, the whole time, wanted to be at Texas Tech, and his plan, as he said, the whole time was to come back to Texas Tech, that does make me believe it was to gain leverage in negotiating more, negotiating more money. Doesn't doesn't that sound that way to you? Yeah, you said my I, plan was to come back. I think the other thing too is just to to see if there was something else better out there for him, and then he discovered, oh no, there's not. Okay, yeah. I again, I have 
I, I'm not. I have no beef. I, I don't either. I have. It's, he's fortunate because, in like you said, in the past, when players have gone into the portal, coaches have said, "Okay, well, then you've made your decision, and I'll, I've made mine." Yeah, I'll, I'll replace you. But if a coach wants a kid back, you're going to give him that opportunity. Sure, it's because just, some guys, I'm sure they say, "Yeah, you're, we know we're not. You're not coming back." We don't want you back. Right. And quite honestly, you know, there's times where players burn that bridge and then they try to cross that bridge again. I'm like, no, that, that, you blew that bridge up with things that you posted on social media or your 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 off-field behavior, whether it was in the locker room or just around town, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so anyway, that's the, that's the deal there. Um, Bobby Hot Dog says Valdez was worried that the cool nickname that he got while he was here would not travel with him. It probably boils down to his fondness <laughs> for the Exxon moniker, which really hasn't – it's not caught on at all. I feel like Bobby Hot Dogs is laughing at us. Oh, he's laughing at me. That's okay. Uh, uh, us, uh, us. Yeah, it's us. Okay. Uh, hey. I mean, I was the moron that, that kind of made light of it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, baseball history was made last night, uh, Jamie, in uh, Toronto. Cincinnati Reds shortstop Ellie De La Cruz stole it's super fun to watch. Stole his 60th base of the season and became the fifth player since 1901 to have at least 20 home runs and 60 stolen bases in a single season. And he's a stud. Uh, can you name the other four? 20 home runs and 60 steals? Yeah. Well, I would guess Ricky. Ricky's, so Ricky's one. He also, Ricky did it three times, 1990, yeah. 85, and 86. Tim Raines? Uh, Tim Raines is not on that list. Mm, that's a good guess, though. Two other Reds did it. Two other Reds. Yeah. Pete no. Rose? No. No. 60? 60 stolen bases? Yeah. Um, Billy Hamilton never had 60 steals. Or, I mean, You're going to have to homers. think older, older, okay. an older red. He also played for the Astros, Jeff. Joe, Joe Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Joe, Joe Morgan did it in 1973. Eric Davis did it in oh, 1986. Man. And Ronald Acuna for Atlanta. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at DoubleT97.3.com.